All right, so the new Unify 5.7.2 stable has been released, which is exciting. And if you can't tell, I'm excited because I like Unifies. I, we've got these deployed at lots of clients. And in the big picture, they are extremely trouble free for the device. And I'm, I probably should even say as a qualifier for, for Wi-Fi in general, they are really trouble free. Wi-Fi is not something that's a uh, known for its ultra uh, trouble freeness and everyone wants everything wireless everyone brings their own devices to the office uh, so it's a big thing that you have to manage a lot of and i believe unify of all the things i've tried have made it absolutely easier than about anyone else to set these things up so with the 5.7 release they still have a 5.6 stable release and a lot of people probably are on that and the 5.6 is supported till november of 2018 but I want to let you know here that the 5.7 release does not support these devices listed with the Pico M2, UAP AC, UAP AC V2, and UAP AC Outdoor. You can keep those on the 5.6 controller, but they're not really not supported here. And I know this is going to be a super controversial thing um, that people are going to get angry about, that there's no longer going to be updates. And it's just how products go. At some point, the new feature sets just won't work on these devices. Um, so they are just going to no longer have updates for them. So that happens. Devices go out of cycle. There is simply um, no way to stop people from getting angry about it, but that's just kind of how things work. Um, people, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen with hardware over time. Uh, it will still function, and that's something I think is important, that they will continue to the device won't just turn off because it's not supported, um, and there's a way you can support it. They even give you a way you can pin to the old version of the software if you're running the updates until it's dead, but it still works. It doesn't turn off. That's that's the way you handle sunsetting something. And uh, if you want to do mess around with these, you can SSH into them and start hacking around with them if you want. But I'm not going to dwell on that. I'm just going to address it. <laughs> um, now, on to the actual release update here. So... The release has all kinds of new fun stuff in there, other features, important notes, known issues. Um, there's a couple real minor ones that uh, are airtime radio presence uh, will not work if the radio is disabled, if there is an SISID present. These are a couple weird things I've seen people do where they try to assign things that make no sense because... Uh, the, they didn't set up a Wi-Fi. So their known issues are pretty minor, but they are there. Also, don't start the scanning, which we're going to show, in rapid succession because it breaks. I don't know why you would want to keep clicking it, but I guess, you know, that it, they were going to fix it, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, so that's all the known issues. I, we rolled this out over the weekend, uh, pushed all the updates to our clients, and, well, a few days ago now uh, that when, from when I'm doing this video. And, um, yeah, that's... We didn't have any issues. Everything went really, really well. Uh, all the updates did. Because anytime you do an update, there's generally a bunch of firmware updates that come with it. All the firmware updates have been pushed uh, to the majority of our clients and no real issues. Now, a couple of the new features that they added is kind of neat. They added the intrusion prevention systems. It's in beta, kind of neat. But I'm not ready because it's in beta and because it's very vague. I'm not going to cover it at this time until I have more information to give you on it. I'm not going to speculate on how it works until there's like a really good white paper on it. And then maybe I'll do some testing. Uh, but I like that they're going there with it because it's we like the Unifies for some of the small offices that there's maybe a not uh, a big budget for some of these things with a lot of small businesses to put a nice firewall in. So the basic ones work because they don't have any ports open anyway, so they're fine. But having those options are nights nice that they're working their way into it. And we're going to cover that again in a second. Add virtual devices on map to plan coverage. That's really cool. We're going to cover that because I think that's one of my favorite features I've played with here. Uh, add SSH keys to authenticate devices. Uh, auto channel features on map. That, I'll show you that too. That's really quick. Uh, new release notes in the UI. Kind of novel, um, so you don't have to read them here, I guess. <laughs> um, add ability to create and set user-defined DHCP options. Nice. Wireless uplink support. SNMP v3. If I'm not mistaken, they only had support for v1, so this is a nice enhancement if you're monitoring some of these devices via SNMP. Uh, restart devices permissions. Added new elite device service. Haven't uh, really read much into that. Maybe that'll be a separate video. Uh, more language support for uh, folks in Bulgaria. Uh, batch remove vouchers. I have not done much with the uh, 
vouchers, but uh, most of my clients have guests with password, but not really a voucher system that you're using. Uh, ability to play historical statistics per client, traffic packet, signal power. That's kind of cool. Uh, link to property panel from location neighboring access points. We're going to cover that too. And support antenna selection for internal antenna. That's pretty slick. So a lot of cool features there. Uh, as you can see, we're running, this is a self-hosted controller. We have, and I'm not going to give you the whole list, but we manage this for our office and all of our client networks. So uh, we're running the mic, said the latest version, 5.7.2. Um, we do not use the cloud access. We use it completely self-contained, which works fine for us. Now the IPS here, I don't have any USG devices to show you right now. Um, like I said, we'll do some testing later. But they do warn that when you turn on IPS, the maximum throughput becomes limited. So you get down to the USG being 85 and uh, 250 for the USG Pro and one gig for the USG XG8. So it does limit some of the capabilities depending on the model. I love that they put this here because it's always the question people want to know. Well, if I turn it on, will it go slower? Or, well, yes, but in now they've actually just defined it. That's great. But until I know more about them and about how that system works, then it's in beta, so eh, test it later. Like I said, without the USG, there's not really any more uh, things to show you here. Uh, wireless networks, here's our wireless networks. All this is still pretty much the same. Now this is where it gets pretty cool. This is the neighboring Wi-Fi stuff. And so here's a couple, and I threw, turned on a couple more because it sees them active. Uh, I just turned on some old craptastic ones we had in a recycling bin, <laughs> old DWRT um, messed with net gears and things like that that we play with. It recognizes them and it also tells you how far away they are from the other devices. So it can tell you um, that it sees it and what device sees it. Now we actually have a couple devices here. Uh, we have a uh, the, the new Unify HD we're doing some testing with on an upcoming video. So we've been testing in our office and we have our uh, classic, let me go to the devices here, LTS Office Wi-Fi, which is the, the original Unify AP um, that's been working great. We've been using this thing for a long time. Um, so it gives insight into that. Now, if you have a larger client with a uh, spread out network, it can see and tell you which ones those APs are close to. And if you didn't know, Unify has a really cool feature that if someone tries to name their AP the same as yours, or they try to use something like a Wi-Fi Pineapple, um, it detects those and warns you about them. It will tell you rogue AP detected, and that means someone tried to set an AP with the same username, password, um, or tried to emulate your AP. So. Uh, that's definitely enhanced. So it's nice that they did some more enhancements of uh, that kind of thing. Also, um, like they're giving you better client statistics as well. So you can look at the stats and historical stats for a particular client on their history, and you can see uh, duration, things like that. So there's more, more advanced options they've added there that's pretty cool, gives you some more insight into it. Now let's go to the scanning feature because that's kind of interesting too. So we're gonna go over here to devices, the super awesome mega AP. Oh, they've also added this to, uh, makes it easier to clean up. So when you open a bunch of things, I closed them all. I can hide the property panel. They, it, little UI enhancements to make it look nicer for collapsing and things like that. Uh, it still has the ability to go through and undock then under tools, RF environment, and I already did the scan. This is pretty neat. So you can see the details and in interference reports. So you can see what is interfering with it, what's interfering with the 5G channels, what other, it's not just noticing the APs, it can tell you where it's good and where it's bad, and you can make some adjustments based on that of what channels you may want to put things on. This is really neat being able to see that and understand uh, what might be causing problems in the RF environment and adjusting the devices accordingly. Great troubleshooting tool. And in the way Unify works, because the controller is here and we have it connected to all of our clients remotely, this is outstanding feature because you may need to adjust things or want to be able to see them. I can do scans and you can't be there at the client all the time, especially when they're having a problem. And we actually troubleshoot someone who had a really old doorbell system that happened to work in the 2.4 gigahertz range. And it turns out if they kept ringing the doorbell, it would get Wi-Fi disconnects. Really weird. We told them to upgrade their ancient doorbell system and it actually fixed the problem. But being able to find it and see this massive spike of RF uh, stuff, kind of interesting that you can uh, dig into some of that. 
So um, everything else here is pretty much the same. They do give you, if you have the wireless uplinks, uh, to manually configure the uplink priorities. That's some of the added features on here. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on some of that so you can decide which device has priority if you're doing uh, failover links. Don't really have a lot of use case for it. Uh, most, you know, we hardwire everything right to the switches and you know, away you go. Now, other tools, now this is the stuff that's really cool is the planning. I just threw a generic map in here because I got lines drawn on the other one. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the device. Now you can add your devices. Here's my super awesome mega AP. You can, I didn't set the scaling, so I probably should set that real quick, so. Set map scale distance in. So you set a scale to determine how big this office. I said this is a 300 foot office. I, I didn't measure and I don't know how accurate that's going to be. Um, but you're getting an idea here that once you set the scale and then you set this, this determines how far the Wi-Fi. Let's actually add the scale a little bit. So say 600, I think that's probably more accurate. So let's say it's 600 feet from there to there. And now it's determining based on the coverage area of this device of what it can go through. And you're probably saying, but it doesn't go through walls. You're right. And they, they've they actually done this and gotten a lot better at it. So you can determine the wall type and drywall, cubicle, concrete. They have some estimations about how many dBs um, that would kill. So let's take and this assume it's an office with drywalls in it. And now it cut the Wi-Fi there. So you see the... Uh, Wi-Fi. Now, here's what's really cool, too. When we move the Wi-Fi around, you see how it breaks it up? So by putting that wall there, it does it. Now, one little annoyance I have. One, once you draw the walls, not a way to clear the walls. And we're going to draw a wall here. We're boxing it in, essentially. Whoops. Control-Z doesn't work. And you got to get the hand just right. Click it once. Oh, is it this difficult? <laughs> and this is how you eliminate walls. This, I love the feature. I'm really hoping for some enhancements here because I like what they're going with this. Uh, let's add some thickness to these because this will help. There we go. Now the walls are a little bit easier to grab. But if you'd set the walls, as you see, as a default, and that's why I did that on purpose, so I could show you what happens when you um, don't make them. They're hard to select. They become really, really thin. Even when you zoom in, it's hard to select the wall. But you can see what's happening here is as you add the walls, it will automatically kind of uh, slow down the Wi-Fi through there. So you're like, okay. And then if we had like a wall, like let's see, something that has a high uh, loss, like a brick wall. So we put a brick wall here and we see how it just kills the Wi-Fi. So you start drawing the outside of the building and brick walls, and you can get some estimations on there. Now this is the other part they added was the virtual devices. So let's plan on, do they need an LR? Do they need one of these HDs? What would an LR do in the same situation? So we'll go ahead and trash that one. And now we can say, all right, this will do this, so you can play this. By the way, if you don't even use Unify products and haven't deployed it, you can just load the software and play with this part, um, which is really neat. So you can see that's what this device would do. And then let's say an, uh, this one here, which is a much stronger device, do you see how it reaches through? So we can see this device, and now you can plan your overlaps. Now this is still estimations because you don't always know what's in the walls, but it's pretty cool that it gives this um, information on there and gives you some of the coverage. Also, by the way, people ask a lot of times why we don't always put 5G in everywhere, and this is why. Um, you see the difference between a 5G and a 2G coverage area is pretty significant. 2G just penetrates walls better, 5G does not. 5G is faster. So do they need range or speed? Or do they have devices that support 5G? We have a warehouse filled with 2G devices because they have scan guns. And so we only bothered putting 2G in because that's all they need. The scan guns scan a barcode which means no big deal. There's not a lot of data. They scan barcode data, so they don't need the speed. The devices don't have 5G, and we just put a bunch of them on there, and it gives them better coverage. But this allows you get a map of the building, do a planning, do your Wi-Fi planning like this, and away you go. So really cool. Now, they still have the uh, 
topology in here, which I love this uh, feature. If you haven't seen it, I've, I've covered this in my more extensive video. Um, this still works fine. They seem to work faster. I don't know. I didn't see any notes that said they changed it, but it is a new version. Um, and the real-time moving of devices and things like that uh, works really, really well. So go back over here to the map and get rid of our virtual devices, put our actual devices in here. Also, just so you know, not all of every device supports this, so it has to have a newer AP unit support this. Like if you notice, uh, our Unify HD, the new one we have is, but our original AP one is not in this list because it's they're older and they don't have the same tools, so they can only make certain estimates about it, just so you know. Now, auto channels, this is the kind of feature we're talking about here. You can do, this is where you can do the scan and make some determinations about this. So the scan takes a little while. Uh, scan recommended, scan recommended, and you can do this and do some calculations. And then you can say pending channel changes, hit apply, and it can make some estimations on this. So it's actually right here, you can start modifying these. Now, th because I dragged my live devices here, it's actually going to provision out updates to that based on the channels that's seen around there. So uh, definitely kind of cool the way they added it in there and give you a better idea of how that works. So this is, like I said, really neat how all this system works. They also added um, when you're in here, they had a little leaf thing to show you that the clients, so how they're connected and if they're enabled. Like I said, they also added some of the client history uh, statistics. So you have more data collection for the clients. And then you can control right here to get a link that brings you back to how you retain that data uh, for the client in the database. And like I said, this is really nice because we run the controller here. We have a lot of storage. So we maintain a lot. And that, that way you can start narrowing down uh, when someone says, hey, my phone is trouble connecting. Or in our case of the warehouse where we have clients that use uh, tablets in the warehouses, uh, same thing. We have a lot of transportation industry clients. So we see a lot of this. So we can get that history and see those devices and try to troubleshoot which one's having a problem. And when you're talking about a big building, you can see which devices they're connecting to because that's where that person works with that tablet in that area and start making determinations. So once again, the new Unify versions is awesome. Um, still really happy with it. Uh, the still hands down some of the best uh, Wi-Fi troubleshooting devices and being very trouble-free. The deployment really well with this new version. I'm not worried about the sunsetting thing, but uh, just so you know, it is a thing that's going to happen. They, there is a list of things that are going to be deprecated over time. They do have end-of-life dates. Not hard, not all hardware can be supported forever. The good news is these are very affordable, um, and the software is free. In case you didn't know, this Unify controller software is free. So if you just want to use it as a Wi-Fi planning tool, play with it. It's really cool. And then buy a bunch of Unify devices and deploy them uh, with, with your plan. Uh, this is definitely a great tool for doing that. So hopefully this was insightful. If you like the content here, like and subscribe. Um, go ahead and get that updated to the newest release. Back up, back up, back up. Please back up before you do it. Uh, make sure you're running Java 8 before you load it if you're running it in Linux. Uh, that is a change I had to make. We'll switch to the new version of Java because my controller's been around for a while, so it just was running Java 7 because one of those ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, now I had to fix it, so it does require Java 8. Please know that. So, all right. Thanks again.